Gary was a man who thought he could do crypto cheering at the SEC. Gary fooled us all with thought he was a hero teaching blockchain at MIT. We'll get back, log it back, get back and leave crypto alone. Get back, log it back, get back and leave crypto alone. Get back, Gary. You ain't nothing but a Goldman sack.
Testing one, two, testing one, two. Let's get started. Straight guy, see you out there, buddy. How's it going, my man? You should come right with me, yeah. Feel me if you hear me sip. Water like a fish sip. That's water to the gillies, yeah. This a new way, this a takeover. Do it for the future, time to get away. Wow. Just like he says, Trigger. $36,000 Bitcoin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Late Night Crypto Charts with Road Dog. My name is Lane and I will be your host for this evening and most every evening that I happen to show up. <laughs> Tonight we just kick it off with a very quick look at Bitcoin because Bitcoin does what Bitcoin does. We're going to focus mostly on altcoins, throwing a little way back with a little rock and roll tribute to the 70s and 80s. So the movie music might get a little heavy, a little, a little riled up tonight as we rock on. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look over here at Crypto Bubbles. Where, as you can see, these are the coins that are pumping our bags. Wow. This is the top 100, man. Very few of these are in the red. Trust Wallet is kind of an outlier. Look at Tau. $147. You remember when this thing was hanging around 70 and everybody's getting bored with it and just sounding off and saying, ah, stable coin. What's this going to do? Well, it just 2x from there. Remember when it hit down around 50, 60 bucks? Why not? Why don't you remember that? Casper's been on a tear. Overall, it's it's been a pretty good week for Bitcoin and crypto, wouldn't you say? So I'm starting to stream a little bit earlier just to try out a little bit of an earlier time frame. Normally start about 11 o'clock, but let's go ahead and let's uh, get into what is going on here. Hey, listen number go up why it go up these are the top gainers in the top 300 and the top losers storage core gas kujira caspa alluvium beam mina protocol bancor network nem the ones that haven't done so good trust wallet sure xrd tommy or tommy EWT, CDT, SNT, which is status, Orbs, which we looked at recently. Decred took a little bit of a hit, but she's still up, baby. So all these are down like 2%, 3%. Trust Wallet's down about 15%. So just pullbacks in some of these. So what is going on with the market, right? What's going on with the market? Well, Bitcoin may be riding the ETF way, but altcoins are where the real rally is. Traders are still banking on the ETF, but increased risk appetite and return of the double digit yield has investors eyeing altcoins once again. <laughs> we got a little institutional FOMO in our midst and some retail people starting to come back in, not the ones that really pushes, pushes, pushes up, but people starting to get bored coming in and it just helps us out a little bit right institutional investors crypto investment product inflows top 760 million the highest since the 2021 bull market outstanding this Institutional bets on the cryptocurrency markets have increased after BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, took a pioneering leap on June 16 with the spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund application, seemingly igniting a domino effect as peers rushed to file similar applications. That application is meant for a led to a major financial powerhouse that collectively managed an astounding $27 trillion in assets to make inroads into the world of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency 
after a race to the list, the first Bitcoin, Bitcoin ETF kicks off. Money be coming in. Money's going to continue to come in. It's kind of just trickling in, but just trickling in in kind of nice chunks right now. We like that. It pumps our bags. It makes us very bullish. Here I thought it was very interesting news. Former NYSE president makes move to relaunch bankrupt crypto exchange FTX. They're serious about this. To me, that just shows me that there was a plan for FTX all along. This uh, this little crash thing that happened about a year ago that was not supposed to happen. There was still some big players and some big names behind this they had a plan and uh, it seems like using solana and serum they were kind of merging toward trying to make everything a freaking security which of course you know gensler kind of likes just my thoughts on that getting out of the news here just some things to go over are you still news yeah this guy crypto savvy Putting out a chart, expecting us to get rejected here about 35907. That's a 382 Fibonacci on this chart. And that's sort of worth looking at. It's an area that we could definitely find resistance at. Remember, we are on top of a channel. We're at a resistance point. But a big t a, move, a move to the upside above that is going to signal a big move up. Instead, he's looking at a target for Bitcoin to come down to right down here in this area, anywhere from 3000 to about $7,000. He's been looking for this, well, ever since back back over here. And he compares it to a price in the market earlier, but I don't see the corrections. I'm, I'm following his fibs and everything, and uh, I'm not seeing what he's saying. It got up to almost the 618. And then it still never came back past its lows. But uh, I, I'll tell you this about Crypto Savvy, because I was watching him back when we were at this juicy area in Bitcoin and I wasn't as experienced in TA and I didn't spend the thousands of hours in the charts that I've spent since then so you know he looked like he knew what he's talking about so I was following him waiting for that opportunity for Bitcoin to come back to oh we're, we maybe headed back to 3,000 3,300 is what we were calling for and you know what's ironic is that we are in the same setup that he was calling for 3,000 back then and he's calling for 3,000 now and I just have to stress this quickly, because I think the last time I tried it, I had some uh, materials hiding the screen there. But rising wedge formation that broke to a downside actually kind of made an inverted head and shoulders on the slant up. Not my favorite ones, but see, they broke back into the pattern. Made a bull flag, an upward flag, normally bearish, but we broke back into a bearish pattern until one day we popped outside of that bearish pattern and then the day that we popped outside of that bearish pattern is the day that crypto savvy's dream of reaching three thousand dollars again would never ever manifest and that's what we got and then we continued now this was after the happening we have not had the happening but right now we've got this same exact scenario playing out on bitcoin Yet, as crypto savvy calls for three to five to seven thousand dollar Bitcoin, the only thing is at that 382 Fibonacci area that he is rightfully expecting we could get some resistance. We're at the top of the channel, yes, resistance. But if we break above it, baby, we're headed up just like what we saw before. So that's this is a situation that we're kind of possibly looking at here is a repeat of something not unlike but not necessarily exactly like the breakout that we got exactly three years ago. We're trailing a few days behind here. Can't put it to the day, but we can put it within a few weeks there three years ago. Boom. Will that happen again? You know, I'm not a fortune teller, but it looks like it's got a bigger chance, a better chance to do this than to fall back to $3,000. Savvy man, 
I don't know why you're so bearish, but uh, you obviously like it. But, you know, if we didn't have the bears, who would we have to sell on us and short on us and... Who would we have to dump on? And who would we have to buy from? Bitcoinio! And look, our moving averages, while not as pretty yet as they were back then, they're getting ready to fan out just a beautiful beautiful and we've been poking our little head outside of this trend line on bitcoin making this trend line a lot weaker giving us a little more of an entry to go there and look on the daily so it looks juicy for more upside all lights are green for go so we are now at thirty six thousand four hundred and ninety two dollars as we speak we are making a run for the border, and on the four hour, the Ichimoku cloud over here is cheering it on, saying, Run, baby, run! You can do it! Ah! The tongue freaks me out. So, Bitcoin. Definitely rocking tonight. Always like to keep track of it. Even though we got our larger resistance areas and trend lines there, I like to track the smaller ones. See what's going on. And ooh, have we got something here? Hmm. Not solid. Something there. Either way, we're above that too. So Bitcoin looks to be rocking, baby. Even here on the 24 minute. Coming down to the three minute. She's just flagging out here. After testing this trend line, it's amazing how these trend lines match up, right? We're just, we're just making it, we're just connecting dots. That's all we're doing. It's nothing magical. But when you see it play out on your own charts and say, wow, 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 just touched it. Wow, came back and came to it. Came to it, bounced off, came back. So the situation now, as I can best explain it, is, uh, you know, we break above this level here. Well, it's very bullish and we're getting ready to try to do that. Three minutes got the little green line too. So I probably need to take a quick look at our indices, see what's going on with Bitcoin dominance because it appears to be also breaking to the upside there on a new channel. Right there as this one has given its support. Let's go ahead and extend that out just a little bit there. So Bitcoin dominance seems to be on the rise and also total three is seems to be relatively uneffective, unaffected. So we're getting a little rise out of Bitcoin dominance, a little rise out of Bitcoin and a little rise out of our altcoins. People are not selling out of their altcoins. They're positioning themselves in trade, swing trades and positions for more upside. What they're getting out of and getting rid of is that dirty, nasty fiat and stable coin. Stablecoin, I hate to call you nasty, but it's guilt by association. And all this just simply translates to number go up. Let's come over here to the chat. Strega says time was teasing me earlier. We need to take a look at time. I, I promised someone, someone uh, put a, uh, a comment asking me to do a video on XDB, digital bits. Um, not worthwhile for me to do a video on that, I don't believe, but we'll take a quick look at it tonight after Bitcoin. And then we'll move on to some altcoins. I do have a juicy list uh, of ones. A lot of these are some from token metrics um, and just some to kind of put on the radar. Maybe take a look at them, uh, but more than happy to look at anything that you guys got going on, especially your sexiest altcoins, man. You can list the sexiest altcoins you've got, the ones that you just really the ones that just really get you uh, turned on and excited when you look at them. The ones that you got the most hope in. Throw those in the throw those in the chat. I would have to say that right now, I'm gauging this probably by the size of my bags and where they're going. And Rune seems to be taking the front runner of my bag size. And Cardano's coming back a little bit, and so is AGIX. 
But I tell you what, that Caspa bag, although it wasn't big to start with, it's going to give him a little bit of a run for his money, I believe. Nick Bond, hey, welcome to the stream, man. Glad to have you here. So we just kind of take a look at Bitcoin. We'll try to do it quickly. I get lost in the charts sometimes. Then we kind of move on to altcoins, and uh, we we just kind of ride it from there. We're just trying to find. We're just trying to find the best trades, the best ones to be in, and we've been trying to position ourselves that way for over a year now. So, the goal is, I mean, you should already have your altcoin bags pretty much packed. If you haven't, you've hesitated, and that hesitation can hurt you. If we are in fact looking at that situation that we were talking about with Bitcoin three years ago, um, that's the thing that I, I'm trying to drive home the most. But uh, this is a situation of max pain, not to the downside anymore. The max pain is going to be felt to the upside where this breakout, if this happens, and that's what I'm watching for, because all my signs are saying, I'm not sure exactly when, but we're going to try to do it. So a breakout here will just help everything in crypto. And uh, this would be your last chance, in my personal opinion, especially for trading. This is the perfect time to start taking a certain part of your portfolio or your, or your dry powder and then start looking at the trades and doing more swing trades, um, shorter term trades. It's a little bit time to be get away from our little, you know, bag holding or investor side. Because that's the investor side was winning for this past year. That's where our focus should have been. Now we've got those bags packed, right? During those low parts of the market when it was just scary and sickening to buy these things and keep DCAing and all this. Now is the time that we're, we're good to let those kind of sit on the sidelines for a little while. Maybe peeling off a little profit here and there. So you're, you know, things do come down. You got something to work with. Maybe throwing a bulk of those bags onto a hardware wallet and then keeping whatever fractions that you want to, you know, kind of play with over on your exchange. But uh, this is going to be the fun trading period. If this confirms a pullback or rejection here, which could happen, it could. S still not bad, but that would give some juicy times to get into some juicier prices for Bitcoin and altcoins. And a breakdown to the downside, I mean, it can happen, but maybe I, I just, I, I'm not seeing it yet. Not seeing it yet, okay? We're, we're, we're looking really good. We're looking really good. We're at $36,400 right now. Not the time to get euphoric and all. I'm a genius, baby. Uh, we, we need to be cautious. But a lot of people have been on the sidelines side waiting for prices to come down. And once we break up, that is maximum pain. That is when they start feeling it. And that's when FOMO starts coming in. And that can be retail. And that's also institutionals because they've been held back. They can't jump in as easy. And when those floodgates open or when the, you know, when, when they get a, the, the little taste to dip their fingers in the cookie jar, they're going to grab a handful. So it looks promising. And we have to, before we start actually jumping into altcoins, revisit total three, which finally confirmed a head and shoulders that I admit I gave up on when we started coming down here. I was like, I'm not even going to entertain that. You know, I just got away from that idea. But uh, we slowly came back and made our funky double shoulder. It's got a, it's been working out. It's got a, a you know, an extra deltoid there or something. I don't know, man. But the, the that doesn't matter. The, the, we got our pattern and we also have a breakout either way. You want to look at it of a channel. It's two killing two birds with one stone right there. Same thing, only different. No matter how you look at it. And we are coming to an area at 400,000. We're just a few, a 400 billion. We're just a few billion away. We've been tracking this thing. We're so, well, it's going to be 70 billion come in there. And it's just like, Bogwin bags are bleeding, man. Ah, Bogwin bags are bleeding. There's going to be 60 million, billion. We did okay, baby. And look at this. What is happening here on the daily on total three? What is bullish here? Do you see this 50 moving average just lining up over here, crossing this 200? Cross has already happened. That is the official buy signal. That's the big one. We, we wait. We wait months and months 
sometimes years to see this cross. This is what we've been waiting for right now, right now, that cross. Does it mean by now? Hell no. Usually you want to front run that little guy. You want to already have bought if you want to play it, play it to the best way to your advantage. And that's what I've tried to do. And it has not been perfect by any means. I will not act like it is. I've made my share of mistakes too. I sold TRB at $20, dumbass. And my rule was to never sell all of it. And somehow I had an order on crypto.com and forgot. I would regret that, but it's no crying. No, he's crying over spilled milk. And that sucker is up to about $143 right now. So consider how you want to take profits and have a strategy. Because if you notice a lot of times, even as good as you can get when you sell something, it go right, keep on going up. So my rule is to never do not sell more than half my bag at any time. And even if we go up to a, say we go up to 2x or 3x from there, I'm going to sell just only half of that bag. I'm going to keep something. And that's just my personal rule how I'm playing it this time. Because that, that crap has happened to me too many times. Just like TRB. Broke my rule. Now I'm paying for it. Okay, so one thing that we got to look at here is Lucy's moving average. That's is the crazy 666 moving average, which ex extremely... Extremely, um, it, it works. It's very accurate. Don't dump, don't knock it until you start watching it. Shows you that the devil is in the details and that, uh, I don't know. That's 420 billion where it says that we should actually get a hiccup. I want to alter my, uh, my analysis to kind of reflect that because, um, we're trying to run up to the devil. And then we got to see if she's going to let us pass by there. But uh, that's another big increase, about 20 billion more dollars coming into your altcoins and my altcoins and his altcoins and her altcoins and their altcoins. And I think that covers everybody. And also a target up to 525 billion for the measured move for this pattern we just broke to the upside. That's where we possibly could be at it. Also, the 800 moving averages there too. It looks good. Now, I will say that there is a point that we will have a retest and fall back to these areas. That's very likely to happen. That would be the time to make sure that you take some profits on your trades. I would say when we start getting up here, start looking at where you are. When we get up to around 420 billion, look at where you are, because that may be where we get rejected and come back down here just to bump to the upside again. So we might have a good chance to tight profit up here. Why are you not drawing, baby? Why are you not drawing? You gotta draw. You're killing me. You're killing me, Smalls! Why don't you work? Work. Sometimes. Alright. He's not cooperating with me. But the point is, up here, take some little profits and then maybe get a, and a better deal with altcoin. We know when the... A hundred billion leaves all coins. Should we see that? Chances are we will. Just throwing it out there. N no, don't worry about it this week, though. All right. Whatsoever, how's it going, man? Chrono Tech and Tet. Yeah, we were going to do that. Uh, the first one, I'm going to take a quick look at XDB because I did promise that. And we're 30 minutes into the show. Okay. I spent too much time on Bitcoin. I usually do that. All right, um, XDB, and then we'll get to you guys' list. I'm going to go with uh, KuCoin Digital Bits to Tether. So with all the altcoins pumping and banging to the upside, coins are 2x and 3x and 4x. And what's Digital Bits doing? Do I have to reload this? An important interruption. It looks like you need to clarify whether you may or not. What? M uh, L M W R has an alert. Okay. We're non as a non-professional. I don't want to declare any status right. What are you doing, man? I'm live. 
for I confirm that I am a non-professional trader as denoted by these conditions. Actually, I'm a professional trader because one or more of these conditions do Man, I don't have time for this. I got to do my trading review. <laughs> what the hell? Don't make me have to stop my stream for trading view, man. This is a bad look for you guys. Excuse me while I try to uh, see what the hex we can do here. Killing me, Smalls. Bear with me, fellas, while I take care of this bullshit. That's the weirdest crap I've ever freaking seen, Trading View. Or maybe it's just the timing of it. That was bullshit crap. Let's go to, uh, geez, man. Now gotta get situated again here. We are Okay. That was crazy. Alright, XDB, taking a look at this little guy. And let's just go to the weekly. Let's cut through all the noise. Man, we can't even confirm that we got a double bottom yet. It might be, but it's it's thought that several several times through this. When you look at the, I mean, look, this is when I declared that this one was dead in the video. Way back over here, we did a we did a head and shoulders right there, and uh, I made a tongue in cheek video about it. <laughs> Actually, putting it into the rock group, which we are rocking tonight. That's our theme. Go back in there, tongue. That lipstick is red, ain't it? This is where I declared it dead because it is. It's just a dead coin. There's nothing going on in this. I, you can look. I do not want to remove that. I want to keep that for history's sakes. I just don't see anything. It, there's nothing happening on this. Um, and this one, so this one had a lot of hype, right? This is XDV to, to Bitcoin. Of course, that one's going to be down. Let's make sure we got the right one. So, and so, same thing. We okay here. You would expect Bitcoin to have a lower one. Here on the dollar, we're actually holding this level as a bottom, but we are at the very bottom for this. the The whole thing that I would recommend on this, if 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 there's no development on this, consider this one going. It's like rep auger. I also did a video on that one. Got that information from Token Metrics. Uh, after a deeper dive, I found out it's a dead project, so I had to kind of make note of that. Um, they're not worth being in, and but people are still trading them. People augers up. It's almost it's headed toward a dollar again, but there's no no use case for it. It's, it has no use. Uh, but if anyone was going to try it, I mean, here's the place to try it. The only thing I will say, just like I say on any coin. Until you're above that daily nine moving average, confirmed above that, you're not in an uptrend. You're not. I Meaning you can still go. You can sit at hundred dollars in here and watch it go down to be ten dollars. It can still keep on dropping. And uh, that's just what's so scary about this one. So uh, when we take a look, digital bits. You go over to their GitHub. This one's already got 20 billion maximum supply. Most of that's out there, and you can see what it's worth. Nobody's in a hurry to buy it at all, or else it would have, it should have two or three X by now, right? Let's see what they're doing over here. Last update was January 31st, 2022. Before that is September 24th. 2021 all of them in 2021 they came they built it they're gone there's no developers there working on it and there's there's no there's no life on it it didn't do what it set out to do so to me I still I consider this to be a dead project
And that's my thoughts on Digital Bits. Sadly, I know a lot of people like, believed it and liked it. All right. Let's come over to the chat. Let's get the, the list of coins. We're going to look at uh, tech. Make my list here. So, or a kernel tech. That's time. Too many tacos. <laughs> Nick says Casper is killing it. We'll take a look at Casper because it is killing it. Hey, Nick, how's it going? Whatsoever, how's it going? Grimmer, how's it going? Haven's in the house with popcorn. And I think we're caught up. Grimmer's just getting ready to work by 5 a.m. in Germany there, man. Bless your heart, man. Have a good day at work, man. If you play this market right, you may not have to uh, go back to that job unless it's something you, you really, really want to do. All right, Chronotech time. And we'll look at that on um, the, is it KuCoin? Well, Coinbase, I think we actually use Coinbase. Yeah, we charted that over there. So you do these things on your own charting, you know, make sure that you're matching up your exchange as best you can. Sometimes you can't do it, especially if you're doing DeFi and things, um, to follow the price. And especially if you're trading, you want to always make sure that you're charting the exchange that you are trading on. I'm just going with uh, Coinbase, and it's not what I use. Matter of fact, I haven't haven't done their uh, KYC thing, the latest update, so my stuff's just sitting there. Hopefully going up in value. So, I, I we still got these targets, man. Uh, basically, this is a... This trend line just extended there. Just going by Wix. It's just it's guesswork right now. But I am where I am looking. I say the easiest thing to anticipate is the 200 moving average. If you had to look at a place that we're headed to, the 200 average would be your your best guiding light uh, with all this these spikes up. So time should actually be like a, since we're still in accumulation here, should be a. You know, an interesting trader coin, too, for people who just want to trade. I mean, it takes a little while, but it spikes up, man. Big numbers. Like, going up here to this target at 1958, that's that's 28%. All right, so the daily on time. It looks okay. It's not looking amazing just yet, but we're in the early stages of pre-amazement. If that makes any sense. But we're, we're just now trying to get started. This one's a little bit of a late bloomer. So, Double Bottom loves that, likes to see that. I'm just going to go ahead and race this little crazy target we had down here. But possible if the market fell under. No need to be negative. We got to look on the bright side. Give this coin some encouragement. Time. What are you doing, baby? What do I see? I see money flows coming to the upside, meaning that when it goes green, it goes big and hard. And we're not there yet, but we're working on it. Slow mover. That's the best way you can describe it. It was above the nine moving average on the daily, and it's well, it's above the nine on the four hour. So things are looking good. Ichimoku Cloud is supporting this. The problem that we're having right now is that, man, I didn't even take you off my screen, Lucy. It's Lucy right there, the Lucy line. That's what we're going through with time. We got to flirt with Lucy a little bit, you know, give a little song and dance, tell her how good she looks. She's sitting up there. Can we please go? And then she'll, she'll, she'll stand by and we'll come up to the 800 moving average and hopefully cross those. Apart from those big, ugly, or those bigger moving averages, our normal five moving average strategy. Let me turn the big ones off. Gorgeous. Fan out. Perfect. We can expect a retest. Uh, at some point, but right, well, right now it's riding above the nine on the four. We're looking good. We're looking good, actually. Now, I want to come back to a daily time frame just to get rid of some of the noise so we can get a, a good idea about maybe what kind of pattern we're looking at. What does that look like? Does that look like a rising wedge? How about now? That qualifies in my personal book. And uh, we got a big 
ass breakout. You remember they kind of go parabolic at those times when they get out of those. So, in my personal opinion, I think we're just headed to the upside. And I expect to see $17, $18 before long on this. And then maybe up to 19 But the first place that I would actually look for it to come to is the up here and then up to this moving average. About 18 bucks. But can you imagine when this one finally starts making up some ground and she starts getting up to those prices that we saw Tau bit torrent at? So we get up to 50 bucks, 70 bucks. You end at a good time. And staying in this long, you definitely earn that. And just getting rid of all the other noise. When you come out on the weekly, I mean, you just got a, you got a following channel that we broke out of. We just got to see some more volume this week come in to kind of make me think it's not just going to be a wick up, but we did break that trend line. So to me, I think it's only up from here, baby. It's just retesting right now the nine moving average on the weekly. So it's got to get above that on the weekly. We should be golden. And that price is 1493. So as long as we can stay above that, I think we're good. So from here we go to CASP. Uh, or not, we could just go to a blank screen. What can you say about CASP other than uh, it just keeps hitting those targets, baby. I'll just keep hitting them. I still got 9.2 cents. I'm looking for it to get up there. I'm on the weekly chart, by the way. This is the weekly. Look how juicy this looks on the weekly. She just wants to go, go, go. Look. Is there got a breakout right there? On the histogrammy. Look. You got a breakout right there. in the music on the daily man I can't tell you how good it looks it just looks great you see this Ichimoku cloud over here you see how thin it is and how far away it is from price right now love that love that it's nowhere near coming back to 6.6 .6 cents it's just not at this moment in time on the daily she's not ready to come back and retest anything right now she set her wings she's going to fly Casper wants to fly baby she's been bound up too long she set her free. She's going to go wow. She's going to go crazy. Look at this trend line right here. Extend that up. What did we do? We broke back into it. Hella bullish. Okay, we're going parabolic right now. We are clearly going parabolic. And uh, if we want... Uh, where are we on our stage of parabolas? I mean, it doesn't do any good to even draw those lines, right? That one's, should I move that? We've got a 618 target up here at 10.7 cents. And also my measure move 9.9, 9.2. So, uh, I've got my bags packed and I've actually just as bullish as been. I've been doing a little bit of uh, perpetual, perpetual trading on Casper. Just tiny and small amounts. I'm not going to be one of those fools out there putting up 16,000 to make a hundred. Speaking of trading, where am I at? Here on Bit Unix. Um, my this was small, this is a small account. I started out with a hundred dollars over here, right? And uh, where am I at now? My account equity, I've doubled it. It, it took a little while. Good trades, bad trades, <laughs> but we're there, and I'm up 77% on this trade, and my entry keeps going up as I just kind of, you know, when we get pullbacks, I add to this trade a little bit. When we go up, I take some profits, so I'm I'm just kind of scalping my profits as we go up. 
And right now it's working. Doesn't you know everything doesn't always go in your favor, but right now I think everybody's pretty happy and pretty and pretty much doing great things in trades, right? And here we are, 15 minute. Can you see what we just did on the 15 minute? Do you see that rising wedge there that just broke to the upside, indicating some more parabolic move on the shorter term time frame? Bitcoin, you headed up to 37 now. You go, baby. And it'll take Casper right along with it, and our altcoins right along with it. Because Bitcoin dominance and total three are continuing to move up as everybody's getting out of their nasty fiat. Whatsoever says TET. Tectum. That one. Man. We talked about it. We had it here. Uh, and you may have been the one that brought it to my attention. But uh, I liked what I saw and the pattern that was in and knew that she could get up. I got in around six cents. I mean, it's not six cents. Around six, six dollars. Somewhere through there, six and a half. I was a little late to it. But rather than insisting for, you know, wait for it to pull back. You know, you got to nibble a little bit then, and then hey, you have a position. And if it keeps going, you got to nibble in, and you can add more. And you're, you, you're still in for under where it is. You're, you're still in profit. You can still build a bag that way. It's best to buy cheaper, but hey, sometimes you got to build them on the way up. Not crazy. It's nibbles, nibbles. The smart people build all their bags over here when it was like four or five dollars. Those are the smart people that were paying attention to this. Still looking very, very juicy. Now this is interesting right here. We did a little horizontal support resistance trip, brace, basically breaking out of a bearish pattern. Just not the parabolic move that we would normally see, technically. On these smaller time frames. I would beg to differ that when you look on the bigger time frame. That's clearly parabolic. My target is $11.12. I want to point out that on the daily, the Ichimoku cloud is down here at $7. It's a mile away from price. We are riding above the nine moving average. We're a little bit above, high above the nine moving average. Now that's at $7.80. Technically, it could come back here. But all these candle closes, these three candle closes, bottoms that we've had on the daily, uh, nowhere, they're not thinking about it yet. And that's why, because money flow just flipped green for TET on the daily. Do you know how huge that is? I mean, I know VWAP is down a little bit. It's going to fluctuate. Uh, we're, we're looking for some, where the money flows, baby. That's, that's Those are the winners right there. So good sign there. MACD on the daily. I mean, we're getting, we're, we're getting in some heated territory. Getting a little bit of leveling off here, but... I mean, that happens. Look, we're at support. We're at a support resistance area right now. This is what we're fighting with is all this over here. And I'm just going to draw a big old thick line. It's really more of a range. You know, all the way up here to about 989. This old little box here. That we need to kind of work through now. We may not. But Money Flow is saying that we might. I just got to put that out there. So, what did I just do? Yeah, I'll leave that. So, right here is when I actually started looking at it when we started getting above this this little thing. You have to kind of look a little bit closer. See how it had a, a line over here and then over here? Well, yeah. Wow, that's a neckline. And when we got above it, I was like, I'm in. I'm in. It's risky. It's risky when you buy buy them when they break out of like like that. It is, but at this point of the market, it's worth taking that risk. And I okay. So here I want to let's look at a kind of reevaluate this with our Fibonacci tool here. Want to adjust my lines? Make sure that we're in harmony here. 618 is coming in at 1214. In my personal opinion, that is where we're possibly headed because we just recovered the 382. 
Remember on Crypto Savvy's chart over on X where he's thinking that Bitcoin is going to come back down to $3,000. He's expecting resistance at the 382. We've made it above and closed a candle above on the daily above that 382 area, meaning as long as that holds, as long as we don't come back below, you know, 865, I mean, we can wick back there and, and all kinds of stuff. If we fall below it, then we're going to range. And we could. It makes sense. We could. We could see 650 and, and start doing some kind of range land. Can't happen. Can. Just be aware of it. But holding this area, we're more likely to actually kind of struggle and fight our, fight our way through here to come up to $12.11 to uh, test that. Glorious 618 Golden Fibonacci. Because that's just how we work. And trading is based on human emotion. And what better measure could you use than the natural Fibonacci? It works amazing. And I do have a target up here. Long term for 2173 for this. It will not go straight up there, ladies and gentlemen. But do keep in mind the measure move breakout target for this actually says. We might be coming up here to the 76 area at $14. Let's not, let's not forget that. So, my personal opinion, 12 and 14 61s are the best long-term targets to look at. To start taking maybe some serious profit or maybe moonbagging if you can do it. It's my game plan, I like to moonbag. Whatsoever says buy, like buy now? It would be risky to it would be risky to buy now. Um, it's looking in smaller time frames. I would say, oh, it's perfect. Yeah, uh, not not to buy now, but soon. If you if you want to, I I would look at. This is our 382 at 865. This is our 21 moving average at 872 right here in this zone. If I wanted to get in this and I was not in it and willing to take that risk, you could do it very smartly. Um, you would want to see the bounce off of here and you would want to buy it after it actually confirms a bounce. We don't want to see it break through that line. If it breaks, starts breaking through these lines and that moving average, it's just going to come lower, maybe to 776. So to do a trade here, off that 382, and you can set some, you know, a decent nice stop loss in case you're wrong, right? 5% coming below these candles over here, because if it makes a low lower than this, you know, it's over. And especially this one over here, but that's a bigger, a little bit bigger of a risk. That's about 13% uh, of your bag if you get stopped out there. So... That would be something to consider. I would consider if we break below the 3, 2 and break, make a lower low than this candle here where it flagged. See, that was a that was a little flag there off of this, the retest. If we go lower than that, it's, it's, it's going to keep coming down. So you can get a nice little stop loss with some good upside and coming up here to our target. That's 39% and that's just spot if it actually reaches $14. Going for a swing trade here. That's 67%, 68% return. So, pretty cool in my personal opinion. But risky. That's why you need a tight stop loss. And if it does fall and come through here, well, we just get to pick it up better because it probably won't come below 650. Just know there is some bearish divergence forming as this is going up and our RSI is coming down. The only time that that doesn't matter immediately is... When we're going parabolic, but we got three touches there. We could be getting, let's say, we could be getting that pullback. And as I always say, it's it's all about the nines, baby. Watching what it does on the nines. Are we losing it? We're trying to lose it. It's not confirmed yet. So just to reiterate the, the bullish things, if we get above these levels, we're, we're, we could definitely come up here and then may get rejected and pull back. Could see something like that. I'm not, there's a chance that we could get rejected here and fall back, but I don't think that's as likely. 
I just don't think that's as likely, especially with money flow coming in. You know, that's that's just going to push us up. So a retracement back to those levels at 382, 865. I, th I think, honestly, I think that's about the best play on this if you're trying to get in. Or maybe add to a bag. Um, I plan on adding more in the dollar area. Oh, I already did that guy. All right. So if you got any other altcoins you may take a look at and put them in in the text, but we're going to take a look at some that we digging around to last night that might be worth looking at. Take a look at a few of those. But I think most I want to focus on the what's really going on here in the market. Maybe there's a good trade out there because it's a, it's a little bit past the time to start looking at the the ones to build your bags with. I mean, look at sin. On the daily, we got the breakout. There's no volume to it. I need to see some more volume uh, as that goes up. I mean, we could definitely get a pullback here. At this was at point zero zero six six. That's possible. With the lack of volume, it's a little bit more likely. But look at this money flow starting to come in. It hasn't come in and went flip green yet, but it's on its way. I'm not seeing, there is some bearish divergence forming between these tops on the RSI, not so much, a little on the wave table. Everything looks great on the daily and everything right now looks great on the four hour, where it was just still above the nine moving average and that, that's just key. The whole thing, the whole beauty about the nine moving average is that you can see you just ride above it and when you, when price breaks it. That's, you know, if you're trading, your trade's over. That's when you take profits because it's just going to come down from there and either go sideways or down. So as long as we're above these moving averages, and even on the one hour, that'll be your first warning sign when we start getting below it on the one hour. And especially if you get below the 21 on the one hour. But uh, it, it looks, you know, it's, it's still going up right now. So our next target... That we got is, you know, it in this area 1.3 cents and 1.6 cents. We're almost at a penny. It was down at you could get five, you you could get four of these for a penny. It's almost ready to 4x from where it was when nobody wanted to touch it. Like send burst, now that coin sucks. Who's laughing now? <laughs> My sin bugs be pumping. All right, so one thing that I do want to do, just confirm a few fib levels here. I want to keep my eye on this 1.1 cents at the 618. That will be a key area that we may probably, you know, the party might be get over there. The short term party might be over at that point. Just throwing it out there. That means it might get there and get a pullback and come back to. Might drop 50%. And that would be juicy. Me personally, I'm. This is actually one of my longer term plays that um, I will peel off some profits, mostly right up here, about 1.6 cents when we get up here. That's going to be a big area to test. And then uh, I will probably definitely make sure that my moon bag is in place there. And that just makes sense. And we got a measure, measure move right here for this channel that we're just now breaking out. That could actually take us even higher on up to 2.3 cents where I would definitely be taking some profit. Because that move, even from where we are now, is 170% return on the investment. And if you've been buying this all along, it was, you know, nearest bottom there that would give you an 8x almost a 9x
QNT, we had a trade set up for this. And, uh, you know, she's going at turtle speed, but she is making progress. We're trying to get it up to this measure, maybe about 128. And uh, we're just slowly edging up there. We're at 108 right now. Coming down from a touchdown at $100. We're just slowly getting there, but uh, it may be a little hiccup getting past 109 because that was our previous high. But once we do get past that, maybe it's on. Once we get a higher a high, we're headed to 128. Here is one from my list. It's Bone Shiva. Do you bone? Bone is at a very interesting spot. It's at a low, 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 right? But technically, if I follow my charts here, touches to touches just for this part. Our bigger, our bigger one's already. It's already gone. So now we're coming down and retesting this for the third time. So, uh, what do you think it, it, it works its way back up to 98 cents? And that may be a headache for it. Come down double bottom and then come up here to the top around our target of 157, 158. It makes a big inverted head and shoulders, giving it the possibility, therefore, to reach another target area of right around 2.85. It might be an interesting to look, interesting one to look at if you're, you like Chiba Swap. Or, but it's indicating you may do something and then there was 100 moving average looks like it's trying to cross the 200 now when they do that a lot of times you will see price move up toward the 100 for whatever reason but i gotta say the biggest my big concern just like with any project right now we got to see them get above the nine moving average and it hasn't done that looks like it's trying to a little bit of divergence there. Bullish divergence right here. This would be the thing that I would look for to say, yeah, this may be a good time to get into Bone. Bone is at 71 cents with bullish divergence at a bottom at a support area. That usually means the number go up. Now, short term, the number goes go up a little bit. Number not go up a lot. number could possibly come up in a little confluence with where we came from over here and maybe by the time it gets there on the daily these moving averages might be there and that would also lead to that but right now they're coming in at 98 cents which is also a nice area I don't want to mark that one because these will change just depending on price action and we can look at this in the, with the fib for like swing trades and that's coming in at our 236 which what do we say we've got to get above that if we don't want to sit here and range or go lower so it's crucial that we do get above that 93 95 was for that fib 95 cent area for bone once that's cleared we're free to start looking at 138 158 the 786 gives us confluence at our other target at 159. So those are the two best targets that I can point out right there with maybe this one coming in play at 138 as it lines up with this trend line that we kind of lost back here. Might have a little bit of resistance. And if you wanted a good future target because we're basing it just on this move alone where we could go to $2.13 before we pull back and possibly go even higher. So actually, Bone does look good. This was a token metrics uh, pick, and now I can actually, yeah, see that this one's, this one looks like a, a pretty cool opportunity. Your safest bet is to wait for it uh, to break out above this and then buy the retest somewhere around $1.50 and ride it to the upside, and that's totally possible to do that. However, if you're like me and somebody has been in here and you want to get in and play this like the whales would do, you would want to try to buy at these juicy bottom areas, and this one is a perfect setup. And again, 
if you're trading this, getting at these juicy bottoms by these trend lines lets you set an extremely tight stop loss like what we got right here. Because if it makes a lower low than where it is now, lower than this mark, it's not worth trading. It's not worth sticking to this idea. Giving you a yummy, yummy trade to the area that it has to go to for further upside to be bullish. 122% gains. Risk to reward ratio of an amazing 25 to 1. Come on. Come on. These other guys are handing out risk to reward ratios that are like three. <laughs> this one's a good trade. This one is definitely a good trade. In my opinion. Hell, it's cheap too. All right. I'm about to put my money where my mouth is because. We, we broke up above the nine moving average. We're retesting the 50. We're in the green cloud. What we got here on the smaller time frame? Channel. Pretty much a channel, so you're at least going up to 72 there. That's nothing. Don't want to move that. Can we lock that? Can I lock that? I don't lock that. And then possibly hit. Yeah. Your own Mech C, right? That's where I charted you. Excuse me, fellas. I like it. I think it's worth taking a risk. Are you on spot or are you on futures? This is Bone Shiba. Why we got Bone? Let's do a little tokenomics on it. Not necessary for a trade, but so much for a trade as I like the charts for the trade, but why not see what's going on to tokenomically? Maximum supply is 250 million. Circling supply is almost ever damn near one of them. Market cap is 178 million. Could you add a zero and go to a billion and 7x go $7 bone shiva? It might over time. Would I hold you that long? Probably not. I'm just being honest. I'm just kind of looking for a good time right now. I'm not looking for anything serious. All time high was 1550 over two years ago, so you might actually you talk me into sticking around for a little while. Boom to boom boom indicates that where is this about dollar thirty? A hiccup at a dollar thirty is that in here? Where's that? Oh, that's in line with what we got. Yeah, dollar thirty-eight. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. What are you talking about, Road Dog? I was just seeing this on that chart. That's all it was, and just drawing an imaginary line in my head, giving me just an estimated target, which happened to come in about dollar thirty-eight. So I've taken that as extra compliments that I saw. I likes it. Boom. Hey, do I have that over here? Are you over here? I don't have to log. Let's see if we got it over here. There it is. You got this on futures. Nope, Paradise does not have it on futures. You got it over on bit you next? Uh I think that's all I got. Okay, we're do we're doing Mexi then. And it is on futures there too. Alright, I want to do a futures. I gotta reduce my leverage though. I'm doing a seven. With a little nibble to get me started. And then in spot, what do I got? Do I got something to work with? Ah, I don't have a lot. Oh, 
Yeah, we close some of these orders over here. All right, I threw a little nibble in there. See how we go. Trigger says I'm going to wait on buys for for buying a long time. Yeah, not a bad idea for a trade. I'm willing to trade this one to see what happens. All right, so Bo is on the list. Uh, another one I've heard, but I'm not familiar with it. It's Jitaru Suka. It's had some hype before. And we've looked at it before. Over here, possibilities, which did not happen. Not really a, even a good setup. We just had a breakout here, did not have volume. All right, let's zoom out and look at this little guy. Are you worth messing with? You're. It does have to go ahead on the on the weekly here. I'll give it that, but man, I really need to see it get above that area. It's trying. It's not above the nine even ever in the weekly. I'm not. This could be the bottom, the perfect bottom to take a, a trip on it, but uh, too risky for me at this point. The daily, I gotta, I gotta tell you, the daily is looking good. The weekly does not yet look good. This could be like, you know, one of the perfect times. Is this is a? I don't know anything about this project. What are you, Suka? This one looks like. A, I mean, it's set up. If you're trying to snatch the bottoms and ride one for much higher. This one's not caught onto the, the wagon yet, but it looks like he's getting ready to try. It may be worth looking at. Oh, come on, Coin Gecko. So, $1 billion maximum supply, $1 billion circulating supply. It's all out there. 18 tiny market cap, 18 million. All time high was 15 cents, and that was nine months ago, so, relatively, a new coin. All time low was a year ago. It was 1.2 cents. We're at 1.8. So we never made it back to where we were in July 22. And it does seem to be finding support here. And this was August and we're double bottoming there. So it's got some it's got some interesting things here on the daily. Let's go back and see what it does. What do you do? Japanese Lord Destin, whatever, to breathe vast flames of blah, blah, blah. What are you? Talent in action, passion as a catalyst to success. We are Ryoshi, the story of Suka. Must be a game. Let the star govern, use its light to guide your way, fueled by the dragon. What? Okay. Maybe there's a reason why you're at the bottom right now. You don't know say what the hell you is. Suka. It's on lots of exchanges. Uniswap, Polynex, Gate.io, Mexi, Coin, X, Bifworx, a lot of them. Okay. Is a meme coin based on the Japanese legend of a special kind of dragon called Jitaru Suka Dragon that's believed to bring good fortune to the one who holds it. ERC20 token say you don't do a damn thing. It's just based on it. Well, at least you got some background, though. I'll give you that. But uh, she looks like she may be rebounding a meme coin. 
not my not my play, but uh, it might be somebody's. Straight might like this one. It has had its height before. And there we are. Rejection off of the 236 when we're here. And here, third time might be a charm. That's at 4.7 cents for this. That's where we got to go. So why have a lower target? It's got to go there. We got to. We got to. You could have this target here at the 200 moving average because we got confluence with the trend line at 3.03 .03 cents. It would be possible to moonbag it there and just let it ride from there on out. That would be a play that I would consider. If I were going to jump in on this, I do like, I like the bottom though. I got to tell you, I just don't like the purpose of the coin. It's got, it's got divergence. This is actually looking like a good setup. Even though I'm not crazy about the coin or like it at all, the setup is there. You have got you got the divergence, baby. That's bullish. That's trend changing reversal, flagging out, getting over this support resistance area, looking for an entry. If you get above two cents, we're at one point eight cents right now. If it confirms a break there, we're headed to three cents. This one looks like it would be easy to moon bag at this bottom. Then that's the appeal that I see on it. So for a D-Gen play, which is really what we're about last night and carrying on tonight, are the D-Gen plays. I'll rank this one high as a good D-Gen play. Uh, it's straight up D-Gen. You can't deny it. This is straight up D-Gen at... If, but if you're going to D-Gen, this would be the place. On this setup or any other setup like it, I mean, I'm telling you. Is that a, that's not a tight stop loss there, though. Um... I would probably, I, I, I actually, I would probably nibble at this to try to get in on that. I don't foresee it coming back down a third time to 0.13 cents, but when you get on these small numbers, a little goes a long way. There is a 161% return on investment just to get up to the 4 cent area, 4.7 cents area that we need to get to. Just getting up to this 200 moving average area is a 67% return on investment, so... I don't like the stop loss that where I would put it. It's a little bit too big, but it does look like a, a good degen kind of play. 50 bucks into this and see what happens. And possibility to come up to 10 cents from under 2 cents. That's a 5x there. That's interesting. I'm going to I want to keep an eye on it. Let's add it to our watch list over here. And that's just the daily. That's the bigger time frame talking there. The four hour is flagging out out here. It's lost the nine, so we're getting a pullback probably about. We should be touching base at about 0.017. That would be a possible entry right there. So entry. Let's do it quick and move on. Not a member. How's it going, man? Now remember, you got your tangent wallet, right? I think ever I think pretty sure everybody's got them. I think we confirmed that already. Just making sure. Okay, so the ones on my list, I mean, they've actually turned out to be some good setups. Here's what XRD. What is you doing? Playing around with your non-moving average here. That looks interesting. I like the rounded shapes there. It reminds me of boobies. This is going to be a trick. I'm not liking this one quite as much. Not yet. I don't really see the strong divergence that I would need either. So I'm going to pass on this one. This one don't look so hot to me. XRD. XRD. Beta is another one. What are you looking like? 
Beta may be trying to do something. What you got going on here? Nah, maybe. I'm not seeing it yet. Not seeing it. Not seeing it. Too early. All right. Not liking beta. Whatever the hell beta is. UFO. UFO gaming. Now, this one should probably be working pretty good right now, huh? Yeah, she already had a breakout with volume. That looks good. Still early to get on this one for a longer term play. Don't know if I would. This is not working good. So. The area we're fighting with is the bottom of this area right here. Looks pretty interesting on the weekly here. We got a cross of the nine over the 200. I'm liking what I'm seeing here for a breakout, and it, it, it is up a little bit. It's almost 2x from where it broke out there. Still, in the bigger picture of things, it's not too. It's 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 at a good place to actually kind of consider getting in. I got uh, 1085, and we're currently at 1390. But the possibilities of where this one can go short term and right up here is the big one right here at the spike um, the main place that it needs to really get above 6494 so that's what about a 4x from here immediate target would be 1915 does need to get above that there's a lot that it could go through really quickly there though let's see Okay, in that area right there. 84.95, that would be a good target. There's no guarantees that it will just pop right up there and go, though. It's been flat for a while, but then again, you kind of want to see that. Those are usually the ones that, that do pop off kind of crazy. Okay, in this area right there, that's with our fib area. It's just uh, it's just now trying to get started. It's one to definitely put on your radar. I think it would be a good one to uh, nibble at. I mean, if you're looking for a trade to get in, I think this one's got some... For like, I think it'd make a good swing trade. Here we are on the daily. Here's our, here's our big thing. Money flow's just now got into the green after swinging up like that. This one looks promising. Even though she's already started, she's just started. So it got some more upside. She's got quite a bit of upside that it can go through. So at least a 2x and looks like a possibility for more. I like that, actually. Let's see. And from where it's at now, say if you just nibble just right off the bat, could be looking at 40%. If it does any kind of pullback, back to the non-moving average area and the support resistance area, let's say just a little bit above that, and then bounces there, that's 68% returns. Interesting. Not remember, I picked up a little MTS meta strike last night. Uh, whoops. Take a peek if you have a moment. Sure can. MTS meta meta strike on KuCoin, Gate.io, and Bitrex. It's a, hey, it's on the daily above the 200 and above the nine. Can't ask for much better than that. At the moment, that's your first buy signal. Or your first official cross buy signal to look for. A nice little support resistance flip horizontal right there. And um, rising wedge breaking to the upside. And it went parabolic and came back down to earth for a little bit. Just retesting these areas. That was a good move. Imagine getting in there, and that was that was a two that was that was a two X right there, the moon bag. If anybody had been in it, and it looks like it it's going to try to go back up there. What gets wicked often gets candlestick. 
This one does like to spike up a lot, so will we see the breakout that we really want to see from it? Well, let's take a look on the weekly. The bigger picture, I think this one's more of a, a bigger swing trade and to play off the weekly chart, just to get rid of all the noise and get a good idea of what's going on. So the bigger theory at play is that we got a channel and also channels turn into wedges when they start getting a little, I just mess that all up. When they start getting bullish and start doing their partial decline horizontally, they turn into wedges, which turn into one of my favorite patterns to trade. And this one, there's different ways to measure this because it's got a big old wick up here, technically. If I just play it by the channel, or play it by the uh, well, channel or the wedge, either one, it gives us a target at breakout. Right up here, right about 10 cents. So that's a fair, good target to look for. But that's just mostly short term. And after it confirms a breakout there, that's 161% ROI. One and a half X just to get there for the measure mood target. Now, I can't tell if I'm getting a candle body or I'm getting a volume wick right there. That coincides with our 382 area. It's got rejected here at the 236, so it's been ranging. It came back into the flirting with coming back into the pattern, right? It's just flirting with it on the on the weekly. Let's come down to the three day and see what we got. Three day looks good. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. It's got promising. It looks promising there, and money flow is starting to come up. So good early signs there uh, that it's trying to break out, and it's probably my trend line here. Let me get it to that candle top right there and getting a, I mean, my trend line lined up we can see that we actually got a candle a, a candle that closed or opened above that trend line um so i take that as a valid that that spoke out with volume that's a good sign headed into a red cloud it can easily 2x to get up to our first targets but there's a much bigger target so it's on a good start Another target I would look at is, uh, of course, the 618 at 14.8 cents. 2.8. Let's come back to the weekly here and uh, let's look at it overall. So 20 cents is where we really need to head up to. $0.53 cents and $0.67 cents are not bad targets in the long run if it's looking for a long-term hole or to play, come back in and play it again. And if you wanted a little bit of a Moon Boy target, not necessarily, it's, it's, very, it's very valid. Doesn't mean we'll hit it, but we should based on this move. Could. A dollar nine. Something that's sitting at half a penny now. That's could be impressive. It, I doubt many people would hold something that long to reach that that target. It would be hard to do. Tempting, so tempting to take profit and get out of it all these other times. But it does have some potential and at a place to get started. And I do like what I'm seeing here as a bottom. There is also a chance that, you know, may still be an accumulation for a while. So that's why we got to see it get above some of these areas. Preferably above this 2.8 cent area. Otherwise, we could be just going through a, a butt crack accumulation and doing something like that. That could still be in the picture. But the three-day having money flow coming to the upside looks promising. The daily thing is kind of leveled out. Definitely one to watch on the shorter time frames and on the daily. It's above the nine, and that's really that's really all we need to go for to play it short term anyway. Could definitely two X up here to just a right up around a penny. Travis P. Hey, welcome to the show, man. Uh, any thoughts on Matic making a bigger move soon? 
Let's take a look at it. I haven't looked at Matic in a while. I do have some, and I've had it for a while. But I haven't bought any in a while. I haven't uh, done anything. I haven't traded it. So it's good for me to look at this too. On the daily above the 200 and above the 9, that looks good. Everything looks really good right now here on the daily. Money flow coming to the upside looks very good. Let's go to the weekly. Weekly momentum waves coming up. Money flow starting to come up there. When that goes into the green on the weekly, bang. That's that, like it does over here. Ooh, that's what you want to see. That's when all this stuff starts happening. All these crazy pushes up. And it's starting to head that way. It's going to have a little bit of a struggle here. Our moving averages are flip-flopped. So this this 50 has got to start coming up. It, it's got to do some work. Uh, and it may struggle. It looks like it's going to struggle between 85 to, to a dollar in, in that range. That's going to be like it had to hiccup over here a hard time. I think it's going to have a hard time getting above that to 125. But I still think it looks good. Let's get a much larger trend line here. Okay, I like this a lot. This explains everything to me. So this major trend line we lost and retested, and now we're coming back up to retest it again. It needs to break it. It needs to break through. And this is the weekly. Let's line that up as well as we can here. So it poked a hole in it here. That's promising that maybe it will poke a hole in it again here and maybe come up to a dollar. If we see that and the pull back to 86. If I had to do fortune fortune telling <laughs> to project what could likely happen. It's possible we could be getting rejected here. Kind of do sideways. That could make a inverted head and shoulders pattern. That's cool. That should give us some more upside. Uh, get above here, retest that area, and then it kind of makes a bigger head and shoulders, actually, if that happens. It's got to do these things to start seeing some, some upside. It's got to get back into this pattern, and once it does, remember that one had a trend line too, and once it gets back into that pattern, well then this becomes fair game, wherever price can go straight up to touch that top of that trend line is where it could actually head. And the Fibonacci's would give us some good prices to kind of shoot for on our way up there, such as here. Thought we're gonna make it there. I think the 786 would come into play. I don't know that by April. 22nd that it would reach that but it very well could work its way right up to there over these next few weeks it could happen that's at two dollars and 34 cents but i mean it's got some other targets that it's got to uh it's got to play with too but once it breaks back into this pattern this megaphone pattern that's totally legit and we've seen that play out just recently on a lot of things didn't look like it would, didn't make sense that it would go up like that, but it sure did. So it, it, it all depends on it getting above, it's got to get above 90 cents and hold that. But it looks like it's trying to, but it may get a little pullback to 60. It may have to play around a little bit, but it's starting to make a recovery, but getting above this trend line is going to be key. Now remember says, yeah, I received the tangible. Cool. Cool. Claudio says, hi there from Southern Patagonia. Hey, welcome to the show, man. Glad to, have, glad to have you here. All right, I think we want to take a look at um, what does this one look like? Zig. <clears throat> there's Zig and there's Zigzag. Zigzag is an exchange. It's a cool looking exchange, but I don't think that would be the one that. Gosh darn it. Well, let's look at them all and see what's going on. <laughs> this may be it, because this one looks a little bit bullish. This is on BitCat, though. I don't think this is going to be the... 
the one. Zigzag. Totally not. And Zigcoin on Mix C, probably the one I'm looking for. Yeah, that looks... It's on the weekly, and that's bullish. Got a nice little breakout there. I'm not sure what this is. Zigcoin. Support resistance area needs to be good above 18 cents. It's one of the coin metrics uh, found, but uh, once it does that, it's got some definite upward action. It's not ringing my bell. Just not ringing my bell here. It's not zigzag. It's not signally. Is it? Two million. Twenty-five percent in circulation. Nine million dollar market cap. Zignali. Are you Zignali? This is just Zig coin. It's coming in about the same price though. It probably is the same one, but I I would I can't really confirm it right now. I may take another look at this one. It looks interesting. It's definitely had a nice little run-up recently. Origin Trail Track. 500 million coins in maximum supply. 382 circulating. Small market cap. I mean, it's 100 million. Still at the small line. Oh, getting sleepy. There's my tongue. Will be Peter Chris for right now. We we'll take a look over here on Coinbase for Origin Trail. <sighs> I think it's getting. It's got to be sleepy time. Support resistance slip right here at 25 cents. That's cool. Need to hold that level for more upside. So it's promising that it is holding that. Got a candle close and open below, or a candle open above that. So that's promising. Double bottom situation. Kind of liking this. It's kind of cool. For this one, I would just use fibs. We're above the 236, so let's put the t 39 cents on the radar. You can definitely look at 31. There might be a hiccup there. Expect to maybe go sideways or get a little pullback at 31. But I think the better plays are at 39 and 45. Strong possibility to come up to 62. So what I like about these, once we get a support resistance flip, it's a great place to try to enter in if you're trying to get into a trade. Is there a decent trade here? I like it because you let you put that tight, tight stop loss. I mean, you can bail out if things are starting to go against you, if the trade's not looking like it's going to play out. And I think anywhere under 10% is good. I like to try to get around 5 when I can. With, But get one that has, you know... If you're on a weekly candle and you go below a candle open there, I mean, that's a 2% stop loss. Well, not at where we are, though. We've got to put it up to price. 10% right below that candle there. It's unlikely that we would come down below that, and if we did, well, we'd have to kind of reevaluate things. But a safer place would be below that 9 moving average. That's 13%. And that's if you took the trade right now. That's on the weekly. Always a chance for a pullback. Nine moving average. It's flagging out here on the daily. Which is actually bullish to me. And the daily suggests that uh, 
She's getting ready to try to go up to, what is this? 33.8, right at 34 cents. And find the breakout of that would be a 22% move. But getting up to this 618 area that we got, that would be uh, what we got. 44%. Uh, three to one risk reward ratio is it, decent. It's a decent trade. Not not the most outstanding thing to look at. Short term anyway, and it's on the daily. The bigger picture to have, it'd be uh, good for like a midterm hold, in my, my personal opinion, something like this. Where you got a double bottom scenario here. And then we can take a measure move from this neckline. And as like a midterm hold, you know, you can see it get up to like 90 cents and take your profit there. It's just how I see it, something I, I don't see any any there's faster horses, I think, in the short term for this. And I think the bigger play would be the best one. And doing that, I mean, that gets you a 2x, but you know, you could be looking at, uh, you know, waiting a whole year, year and a half to see that 2x. So I, I think there's some faster horses. It might be one to kind of DCA into, in my personal opinion. But then, you know, she loves like to spike up a little bit. So it 2x right there on these spikes up. All right, guys, the time is now 1210. Gosh, we've been going still an hour and a half. All right. I appreciate you guys for being here. And if you can, if you would, just, uh, Thank you could hit the mic button for Elvis and uh, help this channel reach a bigger audience. That would be uh, great. Appreciate you guys for chatting in the chat. That does the chat rate does help uh, the algorithm too. So I appreciate you guys chatting in there. Guys, I was trade carefully. The, the market is going up. It's bumping. It's bumping. Honestly, I would stay here longer if I just wasn't getting so sleepy. Caspa is, uh, it's killing it. It's killing it. And I, the, I guess the last thing I want to go over with, with Caspa is that, you know, I, on the stream, I, I was sitting here talking about buying it and getting in on it after it got above my little, my little line here. And it looks crazy. It looks crazy. But after you break out here, I'm ready to play that for a parabolic move to the upside. It's buying high and selling higher. It didn't even get a retest. Um, but I mean, you're not usually supposed to buy at tops. It's against the rules. It's against the rules to buy green candles. These are the rare exceptions when you get a breakout of a falling wedge or a rising wedge. That's the rare exception. And I jumped on it. And so uh, buying all the way up here to what was it? Six and a half right through there and letting it ride. Baby, she comes back down. I'm still building that bag, but that Casper bag is growing. Loves it. All right, good night, everybody. Trade carefully, and uh, well, I'll see you tomorrow night. Bring your coins. Bring those lists. You lock what you see. Ben, please subscribe, eh? And if you like what we do, then smash that like button, too.